Here we are in the Pine Grove, the outdoor church of the Northampton Association of Education and Industry. Florence has many remaining homes of African Americans, fugitive slaves, abolitionists, but the other thing it has are these landscapes. This is a small one, but these are eastern white pines. Probably, we think, the direct descendants of a 150-foot tall old-growth pine tree under which the abolitionists would meet in the summertime. People came from far and wide to speak here at the Northampton Association of Education and Industry. Among them, William Lloyd Garrison, Frederick Douglass, Parker Pillsbury, Stephen S. Foster, Charles Burley, and many others. After the utopian community broke up on November 7, 1846, they would continue to meet under the pine tree. So let's move ahead 10 years to July 8, 1856. The Republican Party has been founded and they're running their first anti-slavery candidate, John C. Fremont. And people met here under the pine tree to discuss the Fremont candidacy and how they might support it. Taking the stand were Basil Dorsey, a fugitive slave, Alfred Lilly of Lilly Library fame here, and also an abolitionist, and Sojourner Truth was among them. Another fellow took the stand, Morris McCall, the leading light of the Florence Lyceum, and he, I think, perhaps um, somewhat as a debater taking a side, said that if Buchanan was the candidate, he would vote for him and that the South had a perfect right to bring slavery here or into Kansas if they could get the votes in favor of it. Thomas H. Jones, a fugitive slave, took the stand and gave Morris McCall a severe but just rebuke. So this is the kind of thing that would happen here. Sojourner Truth, a black woman, on the same stage with the white men of the community. And this gives you an indication of just what kind of community this was.